Rode just released a massive update for the Rodecaster video, so let's go dive in and see what's new. First, and probably the biggest update, is they added NDI inputs and outputs to the Rodecaster video. There's two ways you can bring in NDI feeds into the Rodecaster. One is by using the physical buttons on the Rodecaster itself. Go ahead and tap the little eyeball, tap the one of the unused inputs, and then here you will now notice that you get new options down here for up to four different NDI sources you can configure. So I'll go ahead and just tap the button on network one, and it's going to auto discover NDI sources that are on my network. Here I have a PTZ camera connected, so let's go ahead and click that and then go back out. And now we can see that input five is enabled with this video source. With input five connected, we can now have the NDI feed brought in from that camera automatically over the network. This does require using the wired connection, so make sure you've plugged in Ethernet first into the Rodecaster video. One of the other features they added is PTZ control of NDI cameras. So if we pop over to the Rodecaster app, we can now click on the little gear to configure input five, and you'll see a new section here called PTZ controls. If you click enable PTZ, these arrows will now start controlling the camera. You can see that simple pans work, and you can save the presets in up to eight different presets here. And just like any of your other inputs, you can also do chroma keying or use them in layouts. So here we can go and turn on chroma keying. If we had a green screen, this would look any good. And we can also set scene audio for the camera five, just like it's another wired camera. One thing to note about the NDI feature is that it is only supporting NDI HX, not full NDI. So you will want to make sure that the cameras you're trying to use with it or other devices do support NDI HX. Unfortunately, this means that you can't use OBS as an NDI source with the Rodecaster video. I was really hoping to be able to use OBS to generate graphics and bring that in over the network. However, the NDI plugin for OBS does not support NDI HX due to what I believe is some sort of licensing issue. So for now, if you want to use OBS to bring in graphics, you will have to connect a physical cable, either using an external monitor out of your computer for with OBS or by using one of the little black magic dongles to give you an HDMI out that is not a monitor. This is actually my preferred way to do it because I don't like having the computer think there's a second screen. And this way, OBS can just output to this directly. And that brings me to another one of the new features they added in the Rodecaster video update. If you are using OBS to create your graphics, whether that's by bringing in a web page or just adding a simple text layer like this, you can use the Decklink plugin from Blackmagic to output the canvas of OBS out a physical HDMI port that you can then bring into the Rodecaster video. Prior to this update, you had to use a green screen on the background and chroma key it out. In the new update, you can now luma key this, meaning take everything that's black in the scene and make that transparent. So let's pop over to the Rodecaster app and I'll show you what that looks like. I have this OBS canvas brought in in input four, so you can see it's just the simple black background with white text. So now we can configure the key instead of green screening, which I don't have any green and I would and I don't want to add a green layer, I can now click a Luma key. Now there isn't a sort of one click auto make everything magic work like the green screen. So you do have to play with your settings until it looks right. So I want to make sure that the light is set high enough that I'm not reducing the brightness of any of my white layer and that the dark isn't set so high that it becomes not transparent. And just to show you what this is doing, if I set the background layer to one of my video layers or image layers, we can see that it's actually working here. So this is a simple Luma key, and this is now saved as input four. So if we take a look at the multi view of the Rodecaster, we can see that input four is now actually the combined Luma keyed layer from OBS with a static image background that I've got loaded into the Rodecaster. Now that's great. Luma key is a nice feature, but what does this actually let you do when you start stacking this together? And this is actually one of the things I'm most excited about, even though this seems like a really silly feature. This was something that was actually preventing this from being useful in a lot of really simple podcast studios. Let's say you have your simple text layer that you want to put on top of a camera. I can go and edit my scene for, change the background to one of the camera inputs and have the text on top of my video. But what if I want to be able to switch that on the fly and switch which camera I'm switching to, but keep the text layer on top. The other way to do it was to add a scene with a camera that you want with the text on top, but then you would take up your seven scenes very quickly. So now what I'm going to do is actually remove the background or make the background layer transparent. So if we look at the Rodecaster video, we can see input four has the back transparent background with the white text on top. And now I can actually use that as an overlay. So let's pop over to the overlays tab, which is this button. But I'm going to do this in the software because it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. If I click on the software overlay button here, click on A, there's no overlay set for, for overlay A yet. 
So now instead of dragging media to use as an overlay, I'm gonna go ahead and go into select input and I'm gonna choose camera four, which is my text layer. So now I can see overlay A is configured and if I tap that and bring it on air, you'll see what that did is it actually put the text on top. And now as I switch cameras, the text is always on top, regardless of which camera input I'm switching to. And this is exactly what I wanted because this means I can now create all the graphics in OBS, whether that's chat overlays or text layers or other animated graphics, use that as an overlay option into the Rodecaster video and bring that on top of whatever cameras I'm switching to or even other scenes. You can see I have a couple of scenes configured here. So if I go to scene A, I still have the text layer on top of scene A. So this is just so much more powerful and it really opens up a whole new world of possibilities for doing graphics and other overlays in your Rodecaster video. So just to recap, take your graphics from OBS, output that either over HDMI out of your computer or through a dongle using the Decklink plugin, bring that into your Rodecaster video. So if I've got this in input four, click the gear, configure the key layer, tweak your light and dark settings until it looks good. Set a transparent background, meaning this won't have a black background, it's actually transparent now. Then go to the overlay tab, click on one of your unused overlay slots, and then select your camera four input or whichever is your overlay input here. And now you can bring that on air on top of whatever camera you're switching to. So now as I switch between the different cameras, you can see that the overlay is always there. You will notice a small glitch with the overlay, which is one of the downsides of Luma Key, which is that because this photo has a very dark background, it's actually partially transparent behind there as well. If I was chroma keying, it would mean that I could pick a green that's unlikely to be used in anybody's profile photos in the chat. But then of course, if anybody was wearing green, that would be transparent too. So take your pick. You can do this with chroma keying or luma keying either way. But luma keying opens up a lot of possibilities for doing text layers where you're controlling the white and blacks of your text directly. Okay, moving along to another feature, which is that you might notice that it's very common that green people's green screen setups don't always cover the full width of the video frame. So now what you can do is actually when you're configuring your chroma keying layer, you can actually add a crop. So let's go into the input one here, which is my camera with the green background. I'll go ahead and click key, do a chroma key green. It did a pretty good job of picking out that green automatically. But now I can actually go and adjust the mask. And this way I can crop in over here and that way it'll just ignore whatever's back there. You can see my hands getting cut off at that mask layer. So I wanna make sure I get it just to crop the edge of my green screen and no further. And now that this crop is set, this will apply wherever I use this in a scene. So for example, I can go ahead and make a new scene with my top down camera and then add another layer here and choose my camera one, which is myself green screen. And if I wanted to scale that down, I can you know put myself in the corner over here. But now also, thanks to the new feature that lets you use video layers as overlays, I don't have to use a scene for this anymore. So let's go ahead and delete this scene and do this a different way. Let's say I want to make sure I was always sitting on top of whichever camera I was switching to. So now I'm gonna go back into the Layers tab, click on B in the unused layer, and then select input number one. And if I turn it on, you'll see that I appear now as an overlay. And I can also adjust the size and position. So if I wanted to put myself make myself small and down in the corner, I can do that. Let's go ahead and crop this in a little bit so I can tuck myself nicely into the corner. And now you'll see as I switch between the different inputs, my chroma key layer is actually a layer on top and I'm no longer having to use the scenes for this. So you can see that my, my scenes are still my side by side layouts and things like that but now I've got the ability to, using the overlay feature, take my camera one as an overlay layer and use it on top of any of the cameras that I'm switching to or even any of the scenes. I forgot to mention earlier one of the other really neat uses of the NDI feature, which is to use your iPhone as a wireless camera. So let's go ahead and click on input six, which I'm not using yet, and change the input source to network two which will be a second NDI source that I can bring in. You can see right now it found a couple of different NDI sources on the network, although OBS won't work because it doesn't support NDI HX. But I'll go ahead and open an NDI app on my phone. This is the app called NDI HX Camera. It's, it's an app I use all the time for using my iPhone in other things like a ProConvert, Decoder. And you can see if I go over to the Rode app, this is now showing up on the network as an option. So let's go ahead and click that. 
I did have to make sure to set the resolution in the NDI HX camera app to 1080 30p. But now you can see that my phone is actually showing up as one of the cameras in, in input six. And this is the NDI feed wirelessly from my phone coming over the network through the wired connection on the roadcaster. You do need to, of course, make sure that your phone is on the same Wi-Fi network as the wired network that your roadcaster video is connected to. And that way the NDI discovery will work. But this is a great way to bring in an NDI feed from cameras. But there is an even easier way, which is the actual road app itself, which has a couple of other really useful features. So if you get the newest version of the road capture app, you can go ahead and click on the little arrow over here. And there's a new NDI option in here. Once NDI casting is turned on, then your road capture app will now show up as an option in the roadcaster video. So let's do it this time from the screen here. So I'll go ahead and click inspect, tab number six, network two, go and tap into that. And you can see now that the road capture app is showing up in this list. You'll notice that it says stream A. I'll get back to that in a minute. So let's click that. And just like that, we now have the road capture app being used as an NDI source into the roadcaster video. So what was the deal with that stream A option? Well, another feature that the Roadcaster app has that I haven't seen in other apps is the ability to stream both front and back cameras as separate NDI feeds. So if you click on where it says video combined, change that to video separate and then tap on the dual cam button and we'll do split. It's going to go ahead and restart. And I'm actually going to turn that off, which is just shining a big white light in my face. But you can see that now I've got my front camera here and the back camera there. So let's pop over to the config for the Rodecaster. Uh, let's go ahead and tap on input five. And I'm going to change network one to be road capture stream A. And I'm going to change network two to be road capture stream B. And now I've got two different NDI feeds coming from the same phone. So if we look at the Rode MultiView, you can see my front camera is now camera six and the rear camera is camera five. Uh, and I can actually now switch between them just like they were two separate cameras, even though they're both coming from the same phone. So this is super great for being able to do like interviews where you have one person on one side of the phone and another person on the other side. And when the phone's in the middle, it'll actually kind of look like they're looking at the phone, even if they're looking at each other. So this is a very powerful feature of the new Roadcaster app and a great reason to use the Road Capture app to bring your iPhone as an NDI camera into the Roadcaster video. The other NDI feature they added is the ability to send NDI out. So if you go into the output configuration for the Roadcaster, either in the software or in the physical device, you can now see in addition to your HDMI A, B, and USB, you can also configure what you want the NDI output to be, whether you want it to be program or one of your individual input pass-throughs, or even the multi-view. Once you do that, then your Roadcaster will now appear as an NDI source on your network that you can bring into other devices. They did also make the NDI feature available for free, so there's no extra license charge to enable it, which is a really nice touch from Rode. A lot of other devices will have separate NDI license fees that you have to purchase. So this is just available to everybody now. And I also want to mention one of the minor updates, which is actually a very re highly requested feature. So it's great they added it, which is the ability to use rounded corners or make a picture in picture circular. So if I pop over here and I want to create a scene that has the top down camera with a picture of my camera in the corner, but rounded, I'm going to go ahead and long press on D to first create a scene with just this camera in it. And I'll go ahead and click plus to add a new layer and we'll bring in camera one. Now I can shrink this down, but previously I was limited to just cropping this in with uh, square corners. Uh, but now I can go ahead and actually round the corners. So you can see as I drag my mouse here, it's going to round the corners until if you keep going for a while, it'll turn into a circle. In order for it to be an actual circle, I have to make sure my width and height are the same. So let's go ahead and just type in 421 here to make it the same. And now it's a little circle I can drag around. So my corner radius is now as long as it's more than 421, it'll be a circle. And if I wanted slightly rounded corners, I can go and open it up a little bit and make them just rounded corners instead. But I like the circle look, so I'm going to go ahead and edit that again and adjust that until it looks like a circle. Then maybe let's move this up into this corner. And that is saved as scene D. So if we go and look at the multi view, we've got 
scene, we've got the big camera here, we've got the top down camera, and I also have scene D, which is now gonna bring in my camera as a circle picture in picture in the top corner. This was a highly requested feature because it just looks nicer than square corners. And the last thing I wanna mention is the new integration with the Rodecaster Duo and Rodecaster Pro. The auto switch feature is super popular for being able to auto switch podcasts. But in previous versions, you were limited to using only audio channels that you could get into the Rodecaster video itself. So if you were using a separate Rodecaster Duo off to the side, it would show up as a stereo channel into the Rodecaster video, which means you wouldn't really be able to use the individual microphones connected to it to control the auto switching. That is now fixed in this update. Now, the audio is still brought in as a stereo mix into the recording, but you can now select individual audio sources from your Rodecaster Duo in the auto switch feature in the Rodecaster video. So in the auto switching configuration here, you can see that I can choose scene A, I can set audio links, and instead of only the audio sources in the Rodecaster video, I can now actually connect audio sources that are in the Rodecaster Pro 2. So this will monitor the audio levels of any of your Rodecaster audio sources and use that to trigger the auto switching. Again, the audio itself is brought into the Rodecaster video as a single stereo mix, so you don't get separate ISO recording of the audio. You would want to, if you need the ISO audio, you'll still need to use the Rodecaster Pro or Duo to actually record the audio. But this way you can at least use the individual channels of the Rodecaster to influence the auto switching behavior of the Rodecaster video. Some of these updates might seem small, but some of these are actually things that I think are pretty critical and were preventing me from using this in more different scenarios. So I'm super excited about this update. This really opens up the Rodecaster video to a whole bunch of uses, and I can't wait to get more chances to use it now. So thanks again to Rode for sending the Rodecaster video out for me to share with you on the channel. I've got a lot of other videos on the channel about the Rodecaster video already. Be sure to check those out, links will be down below. And if you have any other questions about this update, leave a comment down below or join one of my weekly live streams on Sundays and get your questions answered live. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.